Hi everyone and thank you for watching this video. My name is Arturo Lotito and I am a Senior IoT Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. This is episode 2 of a video series presenting a proof of concept to connect and monitor a home photovoltaic system to the AWS cloud. In episode 1 we discussed the architecture of the uh, POC and we saw a demo um, uh, using AWS IoT Greengrass running on a Linux based device to collect the data from the photovoltaic inverter to send the data to the AWS IoT core over a basic ingest topic, an IoT rule to route the data to the Amazon TimeStream database and Amazon Managed Grafana for visualization. In this second episode, we will deep dive into the AWS IoT Greengrass device, looking at the architecture, how I made the uh, solution, the device, resilient to the lack of uh, upstream connectivity and to system reboots using the, this spooler component, I will show you the uh, Python custom components that I developed and the strategies that I adopted for the configuration management and the layered deployment of the uh, software components. In the third and last episode, we will deep dive into the uh, fleet provisioning and field deployment assisted by a custom management web app. Let's look at the edge solution architecture. The Nucleus is the core and mandatory component of the AWS IoT Greengrass core software providing the base functionalities in terms of components deployment, orchestration, and lifecycle management. And I'm using version 2.11.0, which at the time of the recording of this video is not only the latest version, but also the first one introducing the support for a new component, which is the disk spooler, which is a AWS provided component that has the option of persisting on disk and not only in memory, all the messages spool from the Greengrass core device to the AWS IoT core. This component is what I'm using for making this solution resilient, not only to the lack of upstream connectivity, but also to system reboots caused by a power outage or by a system crash. And I will show you this feature in a specific demo by simulating the lack of, the lack of connectivity and by forcing a, a system reboot. In addition to this, I deployed the command line interface, which is useful for development and for troubleshooting, and the log manager to collect the logs and send them to the Amazon CloudWatch. These are both AWS provided components. And I consider all these components as the base deployment layer that I want to be applied to all my devices. Therefore, I defined a Greengrass uh, deployment, which targets a thin group named uh, Octanc Base. And as we will see um, at the provisioning time, all my devices will be assigned to this group and they will automatically get this deployment and then all these components. This is the base layer on top of which I need the software components required to interface the inverter and extract data from it. In my case, the inverter that I have at home uh, is exposing a Modbus TCP endpoint over Ethernet and I developed a, a custom Python component to connect to such endpoint and to read the Modbus registers. The configuration parameters such as the Modbus IP uh, address and the sampling period are read from an um, IoT shadow, local IoT shadow, which is synced to the um, cloud IoT shadow through the AWS provided uh, shadow manager component. The data points produced by the inverter connector component look like this, with a number of measures and a timestamp. And these data points are published to the local interprocess communication bus, the IPC for, uh, for short, and the data is then consumed by another custom component, the stream publisher, which gets the data from the IPC and performs some enrichment by adding some metadata read from another shadow, this one. And this is an example of enrichment done in the device, in addition to the cloud side enrichment that you could do leveraging the AWS IoT Core rule engine. The uh, resulting enriched message is published to the AWS IoT Core over a basic ingest topic. And do note that we have here the uh, basic ingest topic prefix, and this field um, uh, will get uh, replaced with the actual device ID of this uh, uh, device. Let me make a call out here that, as anticipated, in case of lack of upstream connectivity, the disk spooler will persist all the outbound messages on disk. And once the connectivity is back, it will send the messages in batch to the AWS IoT core. 
And because messages can be sent in batch and with a significant delay when the connectivity is resumed, having a, a timestamp on each data point is really key. And this timestamp is also passed on to the Amazon Timestream database through the AWS IoT call rule, which is configured like this. Okay, let's go back to the uh, components, uh, which are deployed with another Greengrass deployment, this one, which targets another thing group, uh, this one. When we define the deployments, we have the chance of passing a configuration on to the components, and such configuration will be applied to all the things hit by the deployment. And that's a mechanism that I'm using in addition to using the shaders for passing on an individual configuration, which is specific to the thing and not to the deployment. So let's see all this in action. Let's move to the AWS IoT Greengrass console and let's click on the actual device which is connected to my home photovoltaic system, which is this one. And uh, as anticipated, it's running the Greengrass Core software version 2.11.0 and it's, it is assigned to uh, two thin groups. And because it belongs to these two thin groups, it got two deployments. And as a result of these deployments, uh, the um, device is running all these components. And if we um, look into the uh, base deployment, this one, and we look at the uh, details. Um, the uh, deployment includes these components, the Nucleus, the Disk Spooler, the CLI, the Log Manager, as we uh, discussed. Uh, and the only callout that I want to make here is around the Disk Spooler. In order to use it, in addition to adding the Disk component to the deployment, we have to configure the Nucleus component as well as follows by simply setting the storage type of the MQTT Spooler to Disk. And that's all. While for the Sun 2000 deployment, we have the custom components here. And as mentioned, I'm passing on a configuration to such components. Let's see the inverter connector configuration as an example, where I'm defining a timeout and some other parameters. In addition to this configuration, uh, which is defined in the deployment, we have also an individual configuration uh, through the uh, device shadows. And if we look at this device shadow, we have here, the uh, Modbus parameters with the uh, IP of the inverter in my homeland plus additional parameters such as the sampling period that I want to be specific to this thing and not to all the things in the uh, deployment. So this is all what I wanted to show you in the console. Let's move to the uh, component code to show you how uh, to get the configuration from the shadows and from the uh, deployment. So let's start from the inverter connector component. And uh, first of all, I'm using the version two of the IPC, um, Greengrass IPC client. We uh, create the uh, client and we use the client to get the um, configuration from the deployment. We also get the configuration from the shadow. Uh, by getting the shadow, reporting back the shadow and subscribing to uh, shadows uh, uh, updates. And the shadow uh, looks like this, as we know, with the uh, Modbus uh, details plus the other parameters such as the uh, sampling period. Then uh, we can connect to the inverter using the Modbus uh, parameters that we got from the shadow and we enter a loop where we read the um, Modbus registers. And um, as we mentioned, very uh, uh, this is very important, we add a timestamp to each data point. Finally, we publish the messages with the timestamp to the uh, IPC. Let's look now at the other component, the string publisher component. In a similar way, we create a, a IPC client, we use it to get the uh, component configuration from the deployment, and then we get also the configuration from the shadow. And then we subscribe to the local IPC topic uh, in order to uh, consume the uh, messages which are published by the uh, other inverter connector component. And let's look at the message handler. Um, so as soon as the uh, message is available, this handler is invoked and we get the message 
and we enrich the message by adding some metadata, the user ID and the insular ID, which are read from the uh, shadow. And eventually, we publish the enriched message to the AWS IoT core. And this is all for the uh, two custom components that I developed. Let me now show you the disk spooler in action. I will simulate a lack of connectivity and a system reboot to show you that the disk spooler is indeed persisting messages on disk and sending them uh, to the AWS IoT core once the uh, connectivity is resumed. On the left hand side, I have my Greengrass core device, which is connected to my um, inverter and they are both, I mean the device and the inverter in my um, LAN. Let's double check that the disk spooler is running by looking at the uh, Greengrass components. Here we have the disk spooler and uh, as discussed, the nucleus component has been configured with the storage type uh, set to disk for the MQTT spooler. By the way, the messages are uh, persisted on disk in a database which is in this folder and uh, here it is, this file. So the device is online, connected to the AWS IoT core, sending the data points which are visualized on the Grafana dashboard. This is the time, uh, which is aligned with what we get on the uh, dashboard. Maybe if we zoom in and we look at the last five minutes, uh, the last data point has a timestamp which is indeed aligned with the um, time on the device meaning that the messages are delivered to the IoT core and to the Grafana dashboard in real time because, as I said, the device is, on, is online. Now, let's simulate the lack of connectivity by using IP tables rules. And I'm setting these rules uh, to uh, allow only the traffic within my LAN. And I need this to let my device keep on collecting data from the inverter but then I explicitly block, by doing this, the outbound traffic which is not directed uh, uh, to the LAN. So doing this, I block the uh, outbound traffic to the AWS IoT core. Let's check the time. So at this time, I blocked the uh, outbound traffic and the device is offline. If I refresh the Grafana dashboard, the latest timestamp is around that point in time here which is when I block the outbound connectivity. Let's wait now for a while um, and let's see what happens. So the device has been offline for uh, one hour and a half now. And if we look at the disk spooler database, as expected, the size of the file is now bigger. It's now roughly 250 kilobytes. And that's the amount of messages the disk spooler cached during the one hour and a half of lack of connectivity. Actually, the disk spooler allows you to define a maximum size for this cache file. Um, and you do that in the Nucleus component configuration. This is the configuration that we saw before in my demo, where I'm setting the storage type to disk. But now I'm also setting the value, a value for the max size in bytes parameter, which is the one controlling the maximum cache size. If you do not specify anything, you get 2.5 megabytes as a default max size. But you can set here the desi desired value, uh, for instance, uh, 50 megabytes. And if we deploy this new configuration and we check on the device, you can see here that the new configuration is applied with the desired maximum size for the cache file of uh, 50 megabytes. This parameter is key, uh, above all on constrained devices, because this is a mechanism that is safeguarding the maximum disk consumption. But how to determine this parameter? Well, on one end, you have the maximum offline period that you'd like to withstand, one hour, one day, or weeks, depending on your use case. And to determine the related uh, um, disk consumption, you have to do just simple math, taking into account the uh, desired maximum offline period and the size and rate of all the messages on all the topics. And on the other end, you have a top-down constraint, which is the maximum disk space you can allocate to this function. But when determining this uh, uh, maximum space, please take into account all the other moving parts, such as logs or other caches or the uh, operating system itself. In addition to setting a proper size for uh, this parameter, 
it's a best practice to keep the overall disk consumption monitored because as mentioned logs or other moving parts may lead to an expected disk consumption causing eventually a system instability let's go back to the grafana dashboard to show that no messages have been delivered in the last one hour and a half because of the simulated loss of connectivity let's trigger a system reboot to simulate a power outage or a system crash and by the way, by rebooting the device, we also remove the IP tables rules and therefore we remove the block on the outbound traffic. And as a result, the device should go online and the disk spooler should deliver the messages that were persisted on disk. And if we do a refresh of the dashboard, here you go. We have all the messages starting from 1216, which was the point of time where we, um, where we blocked the traffic uh, until now all these data points are uh, coming from the disk spooler uh, buffer and has been sent to the AWS IoT core and to the uh, Grafana. And as you can see here, the uh, times the original timestamp of the data points is preserved, uh, and that's thanks to the fact that I'm using uh, individual timestamp for each data point, and that timestamp is used in the AWS IoT rule as a timestamp for the uh, Amazon Timestream database. So this is all for this episode. Thank you for watching and see you in the next and last episode where we will look at the fleet provisioning and at the field deployment assisted by uh, a custom web app.